All right, so episode one, right? DJs and not you boxes podcast. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <clears throat> Got a uh, send true big ones artist in the building. Sure. And uh, Chicago-based company. So I'm gonna let true talk a little bit. It's one of those busy Fridays. Everybody's kind of out of it, so we're gonna go through it and just have some fun with this. But uh, so let's talk a little bit about kind of how this whole thing started. I mean, uh, it was a, a shirt design back in the day that kind of started as a mixtape when you hit me up. Yeah, it was a shirt design. Um, my buddy uh, Ryan from Formula Works. Shout out Ryan. Woo! He um, he hit me up asking about doing a uh, DJ T-shirt, and I had no idea what that would be. Um, came up with the idea for the t-shirt it was terrible design terrible tagline but the good thing that came out of it was the uh, Facebook page to market the t-shirt which was DJs are not jukeboxes this was back in 2010 so it was just a Facebook page essentially that's all it was to market Facebook this page. shirt that was coming out so we didn't even know that shit about our own company <laughs> shout out to the beauty of podcasts yo. you know what I'm saying out here gorgeous yeah, yeah. So Facebook page, and this was like before Facebook started to do the like button or oh, damn. like ads even. Like before Facebook really had their shit together the way they do now. <laughs> so things kind of spread a little more virally and uncontrollably. Um, and I remember putting it up and shared it on my wall. Um, it spread throughout all the Chicago DJ homies. Um, a lot of Belgian DJs somehow, um, and little pockets of people across the world like the page and continued to like the page for years before we even touched it again. Uh, Crazy. Yeah, it just sat there. It had all the original content of just the, the shirt that was no longer available for sale. And it was just there living, and people just kept liking it and liking it. And we knew we had to do something with it. Then here we are. And then you, Do hit, with it. you hit me up <laughs> about starting the mixtape series with it. And yeah, kind of yeah, like, that was through Ground Lift, like an, uh, a content piece for Ground Lift Media. Um, and named the mix series DJs are on two boxes. Yeah. But it just made sense to break it off into its own thing. Yeah, because we started talking about like putting it on t shirts and. Then like, well, if we're gonna do that, it's gotta be a company, and you know, then all the business talk. Shout out to the spy life, man. Like, all the the Tuesdays or Wednesday afternoons that were there yeah. for like a year straight, <laughs> just straight like developing and just talking about it. Oh yeah, just brainstorming, plotting, and planning. I mean, we, we had tons of ideas, but it was <laughs> yeah, we did. How to like really execute it and make it into something that's just you know, beyond the logo, because it was obvious people were. It was what was reson figuring out what was resonating with people to click like, you know, what was that? And I think we're, we're finally finding that now. Yeah, definitely. I think having to, you know, kind of go through those ideas and then having to kind of, you know, fish flush out almost like what is going to work. Because we are just barely kind of finding our vision right now as far as the bigger picture. You know, we found this kind of thing to almost be like our shield and like, you know, not like in a defense mechanism, but more so like, hey, this is what we're about. And it was very easy for people to see that up front. And we learned quick that it didn't mean shit, really. <laughs> like people see the sticker. They still come up to us. They still hit us with all that. And I think that's helped us kind of develop where we're going with it, too, as a brand, you know, like changing just our whole vision of it. And yeah. just our concept. Of it. Well, seeing it from the patient's perspective, right, which is something we try not to do when they're coming up and ask for, for requests. <laughs> but like their whole motivation for even wanting to do that and, and what that means to the whole process of DJing and having an event and, and how people interact with it um, definitely has changed how we approach things. So I want to talk, I think, something that we could all maybe relate to here. But how, how have we kind of changed as far as we've been moving since we've all kind of gotten together with this or and have we at all as far as we play or whatever it is, you know, just as DJs, like just having this concept and this thing now that we represent knowingly out there you know consciously like has it changed how we play even i know it has for me i've definitely changed now i've 
my my people come out, my students come out, they wait, they they like they can't wait for someone to come walking up because for me it's become such a comedy show. And, and it's like oh, yeah, like like honestly for me it's become a thing where it's like people wait for it and then it's like, oh shit, what's Sen gonna say this time? Like because I I treat every you know scenario like any scenario in life like everybody's different every human's different so if someone's coming up to me nicely with it it's like okay cool you're cool about it you're not being a dick and you know it's like you're not throwing money at me and saying play you know bodak yellow and whatever the shit is and despacito and all that but like you know for me it's become just that like people come out and it's like yo let's see what son's gonna do this time or how bad he's gonna have to treat somebody because you know sometimes i gotta get on the mic and turn the music off and tell people hey oh, just as yeah, a okay. oh i've done it like shout out to harvey's man shout, like they shout out to illy she lets me you know be free over there and sometimes you know like they're fucking tugging at your pant leg and, right, shit. Yeah, and you yeah, gotta yeah. just be like yo just as a reminder this is a no request zone so you know fuck your request basically yeah. and then you get the groups that are like yeah and then they're just like oh my god he said it he, he girl like you know <laughs> oh my god he went there like yo shit he's talking about you girl and then they don't know what to do after that and then it's like the rest of the place is like ah like you know because it's like yo just give give people a chance like i mean how how often have you got it or you or you where you're playing and you see someone walk in and that's the first thing they do before even setting up to get a drink they walk up to you like yo play this shit yeah so it happens all the time so how is that you know like knowing now that we represent this at this kind of level and where we're trying to go with it well shit like between the time we started and now I've cut all the DJ gigs where that happened the most. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's all let's all <laughs> let's all just keep it real. You know what I mean? Let's let, let's do that. Well, it, it helped me like figure out like what I was gonna be tolerant of. So like, is it safe to say it maybe helped define you at this point more so oh, as yeah. a DJ, like yeah. you know, as an artist and everything? Yeah, you're a producer as well. Well, it's so. one of those things like when you say it out loud, then it means something. Yeah, you know. And I think that's what we've done is start to really say it out loud. And it, I dig it. It helps where you're going. I dig it. Truly. Yeah, I think that, um, <clears throat> like, for me personally, I mean, I've, I, I, I was DJing pretty heavily, like, uh, like, three or four years ago, but then, like, you know, the, in the years I started battling, I started becoming more, like, selective of, like, gigs, like, what gigs to play, like, if it's not like, a lot, if it's, if it's not, if that particular gig is not a lot, not going to allow me to be creative in many ways, I'm not gonna really bother with it. I mean, yeah, yeah you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make some bills, you gotta pay the bills every now and then, and, you gotta take those gigs every now and then. You know, I, I still do. Yeah, everybody but does. I, I shout out to the wedding life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shout out to the homie Bangles, man. Regardless of like, you know, my uh, like my outside interests just beyond DJing. Like, I mean, those that takes up a lot of my time. I mean, it helps me, you know, focus on those gigs more. Like choosing, you know, being more selective and just kind of like working towards that and like, you know, hopefully expanding someone's mind in the end. You know. Hell yeah. And I highly doubt that happens like 95% of the time anyway, <laughs> but you know, just just allowing yourself to be, you know, free and like everyone else is vibing with it, you know, it's just that's just everything to me in the long run. So it could be sure. a party, it could be really chill, but yeah, man, I got, so I, got, I got something to say out my chest sometimes. For sure. So, you gotta doubt. It's it's all about being creative, right? Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's where we all started with. What about you? Yeah, man? I mean uh, like I I'm kind of the same. I've, I've kind of been lucky in the fact that the last few years I haven't really had to do, like you were like, Nigel, you were saying, like cutting out the gigs that you knew you were going to have to deal with that. Like yeah. that's always kind of been my MO for the last like number of years. Like, you know, I'm lucky enough to, to get booked because I do do something different. Like I'm not just like normal club DJ guy. Hello. Um, and uh, also like I, I, I've always been uh, you know, even years ago, it was like, well, is this gig, like, yeah, it might give me a couple bucks in my pocket, but is it going to be good? Like, I hate when people use, like, the word for, like, for their brand, you know, like, their personal brand or whatever. That, all that shit's bullshit. Hello. But. Say that know, again. Say uh, that again. Say it loud for the people you know, in the back. Yeah. If you, know you have saying? a personal brand, you know, you're, you're just lying to yourself. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, that's why I, I haven't really done weddings. Like, I've done, like, three weddings my entire career, and, like, two have been for DJs, and one was, like, a couple that saw me play in a club and was like, hey, we want you to, like, do this. Yeah. Um, so, for me, I've always been, like, this has been, like, a way of life for me, like, from the jump. Like, I just, I, I'm, I've always been selective about the gigs that I play. Um, not just like 
the actual gigs themselves, but like the venue, like, am I going to be like on a stage or, you know, just not sitting up, like setting up a table in the middle of the floor where everybody can get to you all the time. Like I, with the, with the rare exception of like of, of an event that I know is going to be dope and know is going to have a good crowd, that's not going to be on my ass all night for mm-hmm. less. I don't really mess with stuff like that. Right. Um, you know, part of the reason is, is, again, it's like, yeah, I might give me a couple bucks in my pocket, but all the other gigs that I have, like, pay my bills. So, um, I've always been extremely selective about the gigs that I do play. So, you were so, pretty much doing that try prior to, to this. Yeah, I tried to. Well, so, you did. I mean, you got, you know, the Red Bull. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that and definitely and helped. But even before that, you know. You were doing um, your thing for sure. I mean, yeah. when, when you came here to do my old radio show, I mean, I had never yeah. seen anybody play like that. You oh, know what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah, no, that, that's... And even my old residencies, like, when I played a roof, like, when I first started, I was, like, out, like, basically in the middle, on the table in the middle of the floor. And, you know, I would have to deal with requests and, you know, the same stuff that everybody does. But um, it was a little bit different back then. And then later, like, they built a booth that was, like, 10 feet in the air. Okay. So, like, get to you. So, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, stuff like that. Or, like, I would, when I had, like, all, you know, years ago, like, when we, uh, me and Trentino used to play at, like, LaSalle Power Company every every two weeks we were on a stage like yes a I remember stage, that spot you know, like, yep. so nobody you know I, I always try to do things that are more of a live show setting than like straight up clubs even now the stuff that I do like um, you know like a Joy District or uh, uh, you know Key Club stuff like that it's like more of like a you know a kind of set away situation so people aren't at you all night so unless it's me of course unless it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're always at each other's throats for right. requests yeah. you know what I'm saying Shout out to the iPhone face shove, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh man, still to this day, the greatest thing I've ever seen is there. We go, let's go. DJ let's talk. Shadow, who is got famous basically for producing for Lady Gaga, but is an amazing DJ and has been like a huge club DJ for a number of years. He's a Chicago would, dude, just yeah, he's, right. he's from Detroit, but he, but he basically, like, yeah, yeah he came up through here, yeah. Um, Back in the day, when people used to take show phones in his face, he would take their phones and just hug them across. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! I've seen that yes. happen times. And it was all Yo, time. that is the greatest shit I've ever Hell seen. Hell yeah! Shout out to White Shadow. Yeah, White Shadow. Yo, yeah. that's fucking. That's amazing. Yeah, he definitely. We got, we got to get him and talk to him about this. Like, yeah. you know, even if it's like some phone interview shit. Mm-hmm. I think that that see that's that's the good thing about this is there's so many people out there that are so like-minded with this whole shit and even like on the consumer side you know like like the girl that you know i you know that got booed basically at yeah. harby's you know like they saw what was happening right you know they, yeah. they they're watching you as a dj because even harby's is slightly higher yeah. up and it's like they see that you're getting harassed you know what i mean and they see that you're right. getting bothered at to a certain point where it's like yeah well i gotta say something i mean yeah uh, the homie Presto a couple weeks ago he, he put up a, a post about this where like he had to turn the music off at Revel because some girl just kept getting in his ear oh, real right. real bad yeah, yeah, yeah. and she got literally just booed out like, yeah, like people close, yeah. just were just booing like boo like yeah. just hard bro and it's like yeah. has it come to that like do you yeah. do, do people like is the privilege that cool. heavy when people go out? That's like, the thing, yeah. I mean, is, is it because of the music being so? I mean, there's so many angles that have caused it nowadays. Well, you know? now, like, yeah, now it's just people with technology and everything, and people's attention spans being nil. And people used to be able to literally snap their fingers and get whatever they want. Or, like you can hit a button and you can have something delivered to your house in like an hour. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. So, and of course, with music. If you want to hear any song ever recorded for the most part, you can yeah. do a three second Google search yeah. and you can play it. True. So that definitely, like people go to clubs now and it used to be like you go to the clubs to hear a dope DJ and hear what they want to do. Something new now, maybe. Yeah, now it's like, what do I want to hear? What do I want to hear? Yeah. Like, you know, and of course the rise of the whole bottle service situation, like people spend all this money. They're like, oh, I'm spending $3,000 at this table. Like I should be able to pick the music. Like that's not really how it works, you know, but. Yeah. So that's a good point. I'm gonna, are, we should touch on that really quick only because we all come from the era prior to that yeah. being a thing. You know what I mean? We were all playing clubs. I mean, I actually had a two year run downtown, like when La Passage was around, you know what I mean? Oh, I and like, that right yeah, there. that was an amazing spot. And that was like, when like bottle service before it was a thing. See, that was that was dope bottle service. Right, great right. spot. And yes, the DJ group was cool. Dude, and, yeah, I and it opened. There. It was like it opened at nine. There's like twenty tables already filled up from nine yeah. to ten because they have that hour to themselves. Right. Then there's a bar specifically for the for bottles. The bottle there's service. people that yeah. are getting regular drinks. The booth was insanely was dope. Yeah. Like, and 
So then, like, you know, like, seeing that transition, and yeah. I think that's what's cool about us and, like, what we do is we have both sides of it. We all right. kind of started where, like, it was all about talent. And, yeah, you did have to know people still to get yeah, into of course, it, of yeah. course. But, like, shit, man, like, you still had to be good at what you did. Right. Like, you know, like, yeah. you, you could go in there, and I'm sure we've all been there where, like, you walked into a spot, got booked, and, like, the resident was like, oh, fuck, this dude, like, just might have outplayed me at this point. Yeah. You know, because everybody here is really, really fucking good at what we do. So it's just not even... It's not even an ego thing at that point. It's just it's what we do. Yeah. And it's like, yo, to go from that mentality of like, where they were like, yo, just play what you do. Do what you do. We're here to hear mm-hmm. what's new shit. You got remixes we don't have. Like, you know what I mean? All of that to now be in this position, like you said, where it's like, yeah, yeah hold on. Let me get my phone out so when we walk in, I can just go up to the booth and let them know what we're here right, for. Right, what we're here for, yeah. And it's like, yeah. Totally. Uh, can you explain for the listener the context behind the bottle service thing? So the bottle service joint is, you know, essentially like back when, before it was a thing, you could order a bottle at, at a high price. Um, and, you know, you got kind of special attention, essentially. You had yeah. VIP table, you know, you can... You know, you get your little juices and, you know, it's cool. It's like being almost like at home, but, you know, in a fancier setting and, you know, um, you maybe get, you know, seating by the DJ booth or something like that. Or, you know, just little shit, little, little perks, get in early type shit. Um, but, you know, it wasn't like a thing now where it's turned into there are clubs that only do that. Right. And well, then well, clubs. So, yeah, you could, and you could talk on this more because you actually work in a lot of these yeah. places, too. So let's like, not go there. No, please do. The clubs oh. eventually realize that they're charging 20 to 30 times what a normal bottle would cost if you were just going right. to fucking Costco and get a bottle of booze. And this yeah. is kind of the Vegas template, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. So, so they would realize that, like, oh, why are we wasting our time and send, you know, selling $5 beers and, you know, $10 drinks yeah. to whatever, you know, Joe club goer when we can make three G's off this group of 20 people for basically no work at all. You know, like send a waitress over there and have them pour drinks here and there. You know, that's it. It's crazy. So all the money, the amount of money that they make from that is just, I mean, that's how, that's how clubs make their money nowadays. And out here. Service. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, everywhere now, like you go to goddamn, you know, like I'm trying to think of like, Shitty industrial town. Towns under the bus, but like, you know, like hey, we love our blue collars, bro. Ass towns in the middle of fucking Ohio have bottle service clubs because that's how they make. You know, that's how the club's gonna survive. They gotta fucking sell bottle service. And then, yeah, and I mean, even that at a deeper root, like you know, that changed the tax brackets out here and how venues get paid, you oh, know, and or had to pay, and that's why we've lost so many venues. Yeah. To, to that almost, you know, it's like to that yeah. consumption of bottle service. I mean, let's talk Wicker Park. Let's talk, yeah. you know, there's so many things. I mean, I just went by Double Door the other day and it was crazy because they're officially tearing up the floor. Like they had the old, oh they had the yeah, old Double yeah. Door sign yeah, that no, like they yeah. took the old marquee down and like, I, I, saw, I, yeah. I, I caught a picture of it. I was in my car and it's just like, yeah. just seeing that shit is crazy. But like, yeah. you know. It's it's crazy how much of that mentality has affected not just us like just the whole oh, yeah, the whole sure. culture you know the industry yeah. the all the people that work in it I mean we know amazing bartenders we knew owners and managers that I mean let's Lance like at fucking Rodan dude like shout out to mm-hmm. Lance dude he was always about like yo I just want to bring cool shit here yeah. I got this spot you know what I'm saying yeah, and whole like, have gone under all of it bro all of it I mean like everybody's night that used to, I mean Empire when it was around yeah. and, like, even Revel now shout out to Revel they're still they're still on it and shit yeah. but well I mean going back to the bottle service thing why why is that like now even there's a there's a bottle service then but why, why is it now affecting the DJ more so so is, you, I think you touched I, on it earlier I think it's just because of now it's a culture of I can get whatever the hell I want yeah. in life, literally within three seconds. And because you know? I paid for because it, because I paid for it. Right? That's the big so part. The entitlement, right. the, entitlement yeah. the privilege. Oh yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah. Crazy. And that's what it is. People go out now, and and it's turned into spots that never offered bottle service. Now trying to compete in that level, yeah. and then you get these like, you know, these wannabe spots that are doing you know a hundred. Twenty dollar bottle yeah. or something, and then people are like, "Yeah, let's go get shit faced here." And they're like, "Yeah, we're doing bottle service," but it's like, "Yeah, but you still got five dollar pictures at the bar too." Yeah, right, right. So it's like, "Come on, bro! Like you're not, so you're not going that hard in life." You know what I'm saying? Like, right. no diss to you for spending your rent check out there. You know what I'm saying? But like, come on, yeah. man! Like that's like 
it's 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 created the consumer i feel that like the idea that it, the only way to go out now is like that yeah some people think and that, that and that's the problem because you think that it, yeah. you know it's they like the sun i mean that's like that's the other thing is like you know just a little bit of a rant but like you know no I mean, you know, go like, that's what we're here like, for shit social media thing too is like social media is everybody's like highlights of their life you know like and now people literally go out just to stunt on Instagram to show that they're at a club popping bottles. That's their wow. literally their entire existence. Existence or being is like to be like, yo, I'm getting this money, I'm out. If it, was, if, it was, if it was if it was if it wasn't on the gram, did it exist? It did not did it exist. Really hey, did come it on, exist. do it. They do it no. for the gram. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's as as that sounds. That's <laughs> there's fucking music about it. You know what I mean? There's music yeah. that's been made about it just because it's such a thing and that's sure. what it is man i mean you're absolutely right there people go to the spot you you, you see people do it all the time you get a drink the phones go up Yo. they make sure the drink is there they tag right. where they're at and then they're gone after yeah. that you yeah. that one drink you mentioned bodak yellow which it you know what at this point i don't even care it's the best song out <laughs> go so hard yeah, yeah. so if you Shout play that in a club Cardi now, B, bro. within the two first like two notes of, of bodak yellow being dropped you look out at the dance floor, the crowd, everybody's phone's coming up, everybody's taking selfies or, or, or IG videos the video, with the drink yes, on the yes, dance floor yes. or at the table because they're like, oh shit, they're playing, <laughs> I'm at this club, I'm going to show everybody that I'm at this club. And they're playing Listening this club. to the hot shit right now. Oh yeah, for sure. So, and it's, that's what going out has now become. Yeah, and you almost can't fault these people for, you know. No, because they don't know it. They don't know it. Yeah. Right, right. So that's right. a great transition point. So like, that's, the next kind of almost you know thing to talk about is now with that being said how do we approach it as the old guys in in the fucking scene because you are still playing yeah the the, the shit because you like the shit that's I the do. difference yeah. like I mean, I, that's the thing we don't we i think we all have now gotten ourselves to a point where we're able to play because i'm at the same shit all the spots that i play are just like shit i want to play sure the people there let me do what the fuck i want to yeah. do they trust us and it's mm-hmm. the same shit with everybody here yeah. So how do we approach that? Now? How do you do? I mean, it? you. I mean, I mean, I've known a lot of you guys for for quite some years. I mean, I was like the epitome of like a backpacker dude. You know, I was like, I was never yeah. trying to hear anything that wasn't, you know, Jurassic Five or, or Black Alicious or you know anything like that when I was younger or, or Tribe or whatever. Um, and then it, you know, got to the point as I got older, I was like, you know what? I fucking love. Food. Like, <laughs> how are you gonna say that in the club is not the greatest fucking I'm saying, club rap record of all when time? When those like, strings hit, that, man, man when on, those like, strings hit, bro, come on, stop fronting. Yeah, like, stop fronting on fifty. But you know, it's like, is it, it the thing is too is like if you if you get older as a DJ, and I'm sure this is true for any kind of musician, you get older. If you if you start off doing stuff in your 20s, you have a lot of friends that come out to support you because they're the same age, and that's what people do in their 20s. They go party, they go hang out with friends, whatever. You know, the more years you get into this, you have to still stay relevant as far as music and technology and, and everything and marketing and social media, because year by year, the people that supported you in the past are not going to support you just because they have families and they're married and they have real jobs now. And, you know, you know, a lot of 35 year olds. Civilian know, life. Bro. Yeah, they're civilian life. They're not That's gonna civilian out, life. Yeah. They're not trying to go out and get bent on a Tuesday. <laughs> like they did, Straight you know, up. Five, six, ten, you know, 10 years ago. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, shit. <laughs> yeah, straight up. It becomes not even like a time thing. It's a physical thing. It's a, sure. It's a mental thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you, you, you get past 30 and all of a sudden going out is like a way different thing. You got, it's like... It's a two-day hangover. Yeah, and then it's like, all right, well, it's someone's birthday, so I'll go out for sure. I'm sure. going. You know what I mean? It's not just like, like you say, fuck it. When is it? That all ties into the, like, like all right, if I'm going to go out, it's on a special occasion. So then that's even more like, oh, dog, you got to play fucking whatever for me. Like, right. this is the only time I'm going go. out in six months. There you, you know, go. Yeah. Like, again, you can't really. Fault and I've, I've, for that, I've right? heard it too. Yeah, you can't, and we can't fault anybody. So that's kind of what we're trying to do slowly, without you know being the assholes. You know, even yeah. though that you know it's kind of what it ends up being in a lot of people's eyes. It's perception. Yeah. You know, we can have that conversation on another episode as well. But um, I think the dopest part is that we all understand both sides really well mm-hmm. and we're not biased to it like just you, yeah. you touched on it right there it's no one's fault you know these yeah. kids that are coming out these new generations this is what they know so yeah. 
if the if the music's telling you to go do this, yeah. that's what you're gonna I go do. Imagine Shit. what it's gonna be like, like three, four, five years. I'm from saying, now. and this, and that's <laughs> that's right, and we're still gonna be doing this shit. It's not like we're we're yeah. exiting out in the next year. Like right. we're all, get, you know, just getting started with this shit. You know, so this yeah. is just a brand new venture, just with like a podcast, let's say. Mm-hmm. But even in that respect, like yeah, two years from now, like as the music changes, you know, I mean, come on, like we were talking about this. At, my homies like 10 years ago or even more like you know everything was a whisper song sound yeah you know yeah. and like yeah. everybody would fucking drop low in the club and yeah. then like it turned into a music video and that's where it is now because it's still a music yeah. video because you still see cardi out there with the phone yeah. talking their shit and you know oh, absolutely. And, and that's what it is like i mean shout out to that famous meme that's out there with the girl that goes in on her ex at the club i don't know if you guys have seen oh, that yeah, yeah. but the, 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 the yeah. joint's playing and she's word for word in his face with the drink and it's yeah. just like oh shit like yeah. bro yeah, that like song is- that strength the, the shit it has given think- to women is like incredible yeah. dog that's i play certainly my biggest fear is being in a room I gotta I gotta give a quick shout out to this wedding I just played a couple weeks ago man this was like literally like my retirement wedding and shit and uh they they saw me play at Untitled on a weekend so it was kind of that whole like yeah I want you to just play like this so at some point uh the groom's sister runs up to me and she's like yo the bride's ready to get down and like have some fun and shake her ass on a table and shit. Can you play Bodak Yellow? I'm like, <laughs> fuck it. And I was like, Bodak Yellow definitely so, play your yo, So, yo, yo, so like my whole thing was like, yo, I don't have a clean version and there's kids like, here and shit. And she's like, oh, they listen to it in the car. It's all good. <laughs> and I was like, all right, fuck it. We turned up. And from yeah. that last 40 minutes of that wedding was so like lit. I hate to say, that use was, that, that word. wedding the whole, the whole time. Like, yo, that, <laughs> Yo, like, see, so you mentioned Bodak Yell at that wedding. Bodak Yell at my wedding a month and a half ago. <laughs> like, first of all, shout out to Boy Genius because he yeah. Yeah. DJ at my wedding and killed it. Yeah, he killed yeah. it. Yeah, he, he was all right. He was all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, he he he, gets, he, play, he, not, he not only played that song once, he played it twice. <laughs> yeah, and he played the clean version first, apparently. <laughs> and, awesome. also, yeah. and then... Later, like later on, played like the dirty version, and I like all my older families like in the other room, and just this room full of like twenty, thirty year olds, just like yeah. uh, tearing that whole shit up. Yeah. It's <laughs> hilarious. Like my wife Corey, uh, just when that song came on, man, like as I said, it's like gasoline to a fire. Like, Bro, that's it. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Off. Like she's in a great place. Yeah, at yeah. that moment, it's yeah, not yeah, like she's mad at life, like, but yeah. that shit still gets you hyped. So that's right, that's the thing, like. Every woman hears it, and it doesn't matter where you're at in your life at that point. That song just fuels yeah. something. Yeah. You know, that man. Song it's just like, like for her, it's like I just got married. Let me shank someone right now. Fuck yeah! Like, like yeah. I'm in this bitch. You know what I mean? Like we're out here, bro. Yeah. I'm in my dress, looking fresh, and I'm still fucking yeah. you up. Like yeah. we're out here. Dude, so, so I mean, I, in all realness, a lot of people like hate on that song, but I mean, that song is empowered. Yeah, that shit goes. Dude. I'm not even I'm mad. Like, like it's it's. So well done. Sonically, it, it goes, so bro. Well done, Fuck that, yeah. it goes, dude. Like, yeah. true, true. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I've heard it maybe three times. Yo, I on think purpose. You'll it. Um, no, and I li- the the first time I listened to it, I listened to it very intently just to see what it was. <laughs> what it was. <laughs> um, but that was the biggest thing that I, that I understood about it. That the empowerment of it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've talked to some of my girlfriends about it, and yep. they just the mention of it. It, you can see it in their eyes like it, yeah. it answered something or it gave them something they didn't have before so it's good in that respect I'd be lying I if I said I didn't look at that shit out of an altar tapes Boy, oh my god, bro! That shit would go fucking. Now turn it up! No oh, shit! <laughs> oh man, shout out to Bodak. But though. people love it, and they're gonna come and come up and ask for it. So, yeah. like, how do you say no to something that you already you're, know yeah. you want to play? Or yeah, or that is like you might not There's like it for whatever reason, but there's something else going on behind the song that you. Probably well, me, that. I know, like, if someone comes up to me and I already know I'm going to play something, I just pretty much tell them, like, yeah, I got you, and yeah. that's it, and I just keep it there, because I'm not, I don't have to go into anything at that point, Yeah. you know what I mean? If it's like, oh, yeah, hey, can you play, you know, Bodak Yellow at some point, like, yeah, I got you, you know, like, if it's 10.30, I'll be like, yeah, it's 10.30, bro, like, give me till at least, like, one or some shit, you yeah. know? Like, let people juice a little bit. Yeah, I mean, like, some people get it, some people don't. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Like, you know, they'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, I got you, like, just go, go early to that, but some, it's like, you know, I need you. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that's, 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 the, that's the part. The funny, like, how do you guys, like, uh, let me ask you guys, guys this, like, how do you guys handle it? I mean, you kind of touched it on it already, like, when someone asks for a song that you already know is going to be hype, but you're saving it for, you're actually saving it for later. Like, I mean, what do you tell them? I usually tell them, well, first of all, if they're respectful about it, or whatever, I'll, I'll at least, like, hear you out, but I'll be like, you know, and I'll say exactly that, like, yo, it's like 11 o'clock, or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if you kick it to them the right way, a lot of people, Absolutely. you know, again, it's, 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 it's half and half, like, some get it, some... Some will never get will it. Will never get it. <laughs> but, you know, if, for me, if I catch any any sense of attitude or resentment or, like, what the fuck, then it's like, all right, bitch, get the fuck off, you know, get right. the fuck away from me. Right, and I think, <laughs> I, think exactly. yeah, I mean, bitch meaning man for the most part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it ain't, it ain't even that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's just the attitude and the state of mind. It's not about yeah. male versus female at that point. Yeah, it's you it's know, honestly, I think we're all dudes at this point. Yeah, no, no, it is. They're they're the they're the real aggressive ones, really. Like yeah. like dudes get kind of goofy with that shit sometimes. But yeah. like you know, I think we're we are all at points in our lives where we just understand that like every scenario is different. So mm-hmm. like you say like. You could tell right away if someone comes up to you on some cool shit. Because I've had people like, hey, man, I'm sorry to bother you, man. Like, you're doing your yeah. thing. But, like, you know, like, at some point, you think you could, like, throw this in? And, yeah, I got you. No problem. Dope, man. Like, keep doing your thing. And that's it. And I just avoided a whole right. scenario where, like, I'm not an angry DJ out there. Like I said, yeah. I'm just trying to do my thing. So, yeah. like, I don't have to be a dick about it. You don't have... It doesn't always call for that. Sometimes sure. people do bring that out. And it's like, all right, well, like, you know... Hey, Lauren Hill theory, like I add a motherfucker so the ignorant people hear me. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like sometimes you gotta curse at somebody to wake them up. And it's like, yo, if I'm being hella nice to you about some shit, and then it's just like, hey, fuck off. Right. Oh, what? And it's like, oh, you got that. You understood right. that. Cool. Yeah, sure. Now that I have your attention, this is why I said fuck off. Right. I didn't right. mean to say fuck off. I don't normally say that, but guess right. what? You got me to this point where you're disrespecting me in my house. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like at that point, you like. I'll play the fucking song, man. Like, yeah, we all know yeah. it's gonna smash. Like, you ain't gotta yeah. tell me it's gonna turn the dance floor up. Like, right, right. come on, I'm a DJ. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. We know this. Like, mm-hmm. but, like you said. You know what, though? I mean, honestly, to that point, and this, again, sorry to interject. No, but, this is point. Also, I think that a lot of people that go out there, 21, 22, 23, they also might be used to DJs that fucking suck. Yeah. Amen. Exactly. So, you this, I mean? yes, this, so now, so again, it's not like, a consumer thing all the way, it's also a DJ thing. So, that's the right. other side of our whole yeah. fucking company, yeah. essentially, is yeah. not retraining the consumer only, but also showing that, like, yes, it has got saturated with trash. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of shitty DJs. Yeah, we we, we know a lot of them. Yeah. What the fuck? We, we have a lot of them in the city. Like, whatever, yeah, man. DJs like they don't know how to say no and that kind of nurture no behavior. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 No backing. Yeah. So it's not like just educating the consumers, <laughs> educating other DJs too. Yes. Like, you can say no and you can charge more than $50 for a <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's not about drink tickets, guys. That kind of like leads to the behavior. Like, They'll give them to you at the end oh, of the night. If, if you're not going to play right now, I'm just going to go to the next bar over where they're playing already. Like, yeah, and then you're right. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go. I mean, that's Division Street over here by yeah. me right now. Yeah. Like, that's you could go anywhere oh, yeah, and yeah. hear the same shit. Yeah. But then there's Easy Bar where they let me play, and it's just like, you get those people that are like, yo, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And then, you know, it's like there's a pool table and a giant Jenga set and they're like okay this is kind of fresh like yeah. and this is different from what's happening so we could go to all the other places and right. i think the only other spot is next door is rhyme and reason and they're the only other spot that isn't doing that shit but like every yeah old jerry's so oh, like ooh. yeah rhyme and reason now they, yeah, they, they, graffiti they, only inside. <laughs> <laughs> edgy edgy uh so hip. homo so you know what i mean but you know, I think so that's like so hot. <laughs> I think I think that's why, like, you know, all of us have like done somewhat well. Is like, you know, we we're not like pandering type. Like, yep. again, it's like I get booked at this point because they, whether it's the promoters or whatever, they want something different. Even if it's for one night every two months, you know, for some of the spots I play. It's right. Like, all right. Like, yeah. we'll have all these other guys come through, but we're gonna book this guy like on some different shit. And, you know, I mean, you that, especially now again, like you say, where there's like there's literally, you know, for the like for the for those listening outside of Chicago, I'm sure there's like this a lot of other places, but there's like different districts where like entire streets will be bars slash clubs. So you can go down the street and hear the same song at the same time of night yep. in every single place. Yeah. Yep. So again, like you were saying, if you come down and you hear same song over and over and over, but then you come to bar number six and you hear some different shit. And people getting down and it's just a different vibe like 
you're drawn yeah, to you it. Want to go in there. Yeah, a lot of people naturally get drawn to it, and you know, it's like the people get scared to be individuals these days too a lot when they go out. You know, it's yeah. like there is a cool factor to it. Yes, like that's part of it. Like we are in the entertainment. Like you know, the nightlife. There is a cool f- factor to it, whether we you know like it or not. We are in something that's some cool shit yeah. at the, in that respect. So, you know, people feel sometimes they got to live up to something when they go out as well because it's become such a thing rather than like, you know, just like, yo, like, I, you know, I, I noticed heavy when I was on the West Coast of like people just let loose. Like, and of course, there's going to be spots like that yeah. still, but there are a lot of places that do have and allow people to just let loose. And you get like the girls that are wearing the red bottoms dancing with dudes in fanny packs and shit, which was a true yeah, story yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened. Yeah. Shout out to Motown Mondays out there. Like That shit happened on, on a fact. And I was like, holy shit. And it was like, they were having a good time. Like, it yeah. wasn't like, oh, let me clown this dude and like Robert, get it yeah, for yeah, the yeah. gram. Like, no, this was like, they're having a fucking fantastic time. Mm-hmm. So like, that's another side of it too, you know? Like, people, like th- those groups that will walk to bar number six and be like, yeah. Yo, what's going on that's in there? That's what I want to play for. You know? Yeah, that's exactly. Why, guess, exactly. That's like why I always try to be somewhat picky. We love like, bar number six. You always DJ bar number six. Oh, always DJ bar number six. <laughs> Rule number one to DJ, yeah. bar number six is always it, yo. Yes. One Kids. through six is always it. One through five and then seven through 400 that's are trash. all going to be playing the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's trash. That's trash. That's trash. Yeah. Bar number six is where I want to be playing all the time. Find your bar six, guys. Find your bar number Yo, six. for real. Find your bar number six. That's that's what it comes down for to, real. man. It takes time, you know what I mean? Like, you got to go through the shits, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, yeah. but there's still, like, if you do it right from the start, I think you can create that for yourself yeah. from the go. You and know? also, I think a lot of this comes down to, like, people aren't really fans of music anymore like they used to be. Um, yep. And again, it's a bit of a tangent, but like, you know, you, you, if you liked music back in the day, you had to buy it to listen to it. You couldn't, or the only other way was to go out and hear it in a venue. In a club so, setting. Right. Like, again, now any song that's ever been recorded for the most part, save for su- super, super rare joints, you can find it in 0.3 seconds. You can find, four, yeah, 45 reprises that are only on that vinyl yeah, and just, yeah. just chilling on YouTube and shit. Yeah. Like, it was like a, a point of pride to have to rep your yes, music. Absolutely. And the music absolutely. to find you. Absolutely. Yeah. And part of the reason of that is like music's so disposable now that people don't have that connection like they used to. Like all of us, I can guarantee you when we were in high school, like there were some groups or songs or whatever that we fucking lived and died by. Absolutely. That doesn't really happen anymore. I know this. Yeah. From, you, know, you pay ten bucks to stream unlimited, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Month, there's not that instead of anymore. saving up ten bucks to buy that one CD that yes. you just yes. ran and you and, and, and yeah. as much as you hated half the tracks, sometimes you still adored that yeah, album because yeah, it's yeah. like you bought it, you yeah. owned it. So like from a DJ standpoint, like we all kind of came up making our library that way. You sure. know what I mean? So you know we talk about you know the respect for music these days and like how DJs don't really get it. Mm-hmm. I think you know. DJs that have come I mean, in. Club, I mean, club goers don't get it. No, I'm saying, no, but even the transition too, that, like yeah. for, from our side of it, is like the 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 person just comes into the digital world. Mm-hmm. So even from a consumer or a DJ standpoint, yeah, yeah. that's the same thing. They get into Serato. All it is is, hey, bro, let me get some crates. And all of a sudden you got a library and you're out playing. Versus sure. like, but us, like we had to fucking collect. We had to, yeah. you know, like we had to go... Uh, half of our Serato shit that we had when we first started was either from CDJ, yeah, right? Yeah. CDJs that we were using out in the clubs, or we just had records that we were able Burn, to start yeah, burning. Yeah. 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 So it's that is a big that's a big part of it too, and that's the consumer and the DJ as well. And I think yeah. that the digital aspect of it, and, you know, we could talk that episode as well with you know the industry and how the digital world changed it. Yeah. But that plays a big role in the respect side of it too. Like we we've had these talks where. It's it's not special anymore, man. It's like, not special. Music, yeah. it just in general is not special anymore, and it's, oh, it's, and it doesn't define people like yes, how they're being. Be. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and that's not like to be old guy. No, it's but, not. Like, it's just real shit. Like yeah. what the fuck? But like, when shit. You, you t- you've taught DJ classes, I think we will. Yes, at some yes. Point. Um, I always find it interesting in the beginning of any session where um, it comes down. They they kind of learn the basics on the songs they know. And then it's like, all right, now start bringing in your music and things you want to play. And a lot of them have no idea what that is. They just know what they hear and what's yeah. immediately available, but they don't know what they really, really like. Right. And so, half of them just bring in a phone. 
and have a yeah. Spotify playlist or an Apple think Music they're playlist. Be able to DJ right. <laughs> and and that's the other yeah. side. Like and it's just like, yo, like I you know, it's like I did it kinda I did this paper back in high school about uh perception and uh uh, Paris Hilton saying she had a show back in the day about uh, her and that Nicole Richie girl and she made a comment about Walmart being a place that they sell walls and everybody was like yo you're the dumbest fucking woman on, in, in, in life and I had to stop and say like well I mean she's never really she had to know. go to a Walmart yeah. so I mean no. can you blame her for not knowing that like can you really like she lives in a bubble that doesn't include yeah. Walmart is it yeah, her fault? Yeah, yeah. Not really. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of what it is right now. Like, right. Kids are kind of in a bubble. Yes. Like, music, yeah. That's music, my point. Like, there's, there's, it's, I mean, old men. I'm not even that old, but just like, just, this sounds like old men. We're all over 30. Like, We're all over I'm, 30. I'm 28. Yeah, he's oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got a fucking awesome mentality. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to you, young No, nah, man. Like, <laughs> it's getting to a point. I mean, we, just what you guys mentioned earlier, like, you know, there's a physical aspect to music in terms of collecting. Like, you know, you appreciated that album cover, whatever, whatever. Now all you have to do is just, you know, go on your phone and just put the track on. You know, music's become real disposable now, and like, yeah, yeah the appreciation. You're kind of in the middle of it. You're yeah. like the very end of like having to buy physical music, right? Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Like, you were still super young like, when the streaming thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was at a point where it's kind of like in a transition like that's people, what I mean you're the very end exactly. of the, people know. were still buying CDs but you know MP, MP3s are becoming widely available yeah. and just easier to get yeah. so yeah I mean yeah. that's it's kind of weird being on the uh, like the fence of it to, you know more or less because yeah I, I, I get cats that that understand it, that kind of have a similar per- perception that we do, that they appreciate that. They actually appreciate the music, but then there's also like guys who are just like, you know, oh yeah, I have, I have like a Spotify account with all this playlist, but you have like 10, like 5,000 songs in this shit. Do you actually like- Like you know any yeah, of this? Or you, 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 yeah, yeah like, you really care. care about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. like they don't, I mean, yeah. That's, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, factors that get, you know, that pull people, you know, to music, but, just the fact that you know kids this generation are just so inundated you know mm, so the yeah, point that like they yeah. can't you, they can't really i mean i, I this kind of this, there's a lot of parallels here like you can find anything on youtube and learn it True. and yeah but what is it actually like what, what are you gonna do with it and what's like what are you gonna do more with it as opposed to just pulling from youtube for creativity Shit, you talked about teaching djing i mean i get so many people that you know i've been doing it for what four or five years now Shout out to Big One for even fucking being something that got me in there. Oh, yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? And like, but like, yo, like, you get the people that are like, yeah, I was on YouTube and I only got this much. And then they come sit with us and they're like, oh shit, that's not what YouTube told us at all. And it's like, yep, you're yeah, right. you're not going to get it unless you really want it, you mm-hmm. know? And it, like, there's that, it's only one layer. Like, I say this shit all the time. Like, people are like onions and shit. Everybody got layers to yeah. it. And that's what this whole life shit is. And it's like, on some, with what we do, it's like, yo, like, you want to go that route? Yeah, you're going to go learn that shit. You're going to go see where Serato in the digital world even came from. You're going to go collect music. Like, I got, you know, this this young kid. He's, I think, probably at this point, 17 or 18, and he's just doing gigs and all the time now. But, like, he goes and, like, gigs for music, like, digitally. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's like, that's, he gets to hold that shit in that respect. Right. But it, and it's dope because I'm like, yeah. You're the new generation of it because it is a digital world that we yeah, live in yeah. and we've all adapted to it, but you still have the the mentality like, and it's not a right or wrong mentality necessarily because we can't look at it like that. It's just more so like you have the mentality that shows the, the, the further respect for it. Anytime you start researching something, anytime you go look into something more, anytime you start just asking more questions and actually listening instead of just hearing people, right? You could hear shit all the time. But when you're actually listening and you become a sponge and you start absorbing that shit, then you start showing a different level of respect for whatever that thing is. Exactly. So these people that are coming in with this DJ shit, you know, that really are doing it at different levels, you could tell, man, you could Mm -hmm. see who's got it. Like there's flavor behind what they do. You could tell where their influence is coming from. They got, you know, the music behind it. You know, if they're, if they're ever in interviews, you hear the way they speak about the shit. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's dope. I, yeah. It's dope, man. There's, there's there's people. I like Chris Carnes, man. Like, he's such a big level with it. But he still has no problem saying what it is and why it is. And he's educated on how he tells yeah. it. You know what I mean? And that's what's dope. Because there's people out there still doing that. You know? And like... Yeah. And 
whether it's that level or the new school. Like, there's... Yeah, man, the new school. Like, a 12-year-old one that... Yo, Raina, right? Yeah. Raina? Yeah. Yo, yeah. Shout, like, shout out not... to Raina. And that shit... And that was a dope-ass set, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, that shit had flavor yeah. to it. It had technicality to it. Like, it wasn't just, like, glitchy sounds and buttons like, like I've been seeing all over the place mm-hmm. lately. Like, yo, that shit was just fresh, dude. Yeah. Like, she and was it, cutting and all that. Like... You, but you can eat... Like, that's kind of the thing, man. Like, the... People who dig deep, whether it's you know learning techniques or just like just having like music knowledge, yes, like they're they're always gonna be there. There's always gonna be a handful of people. So those are the people who are gonna strive, you know. Yeah, I mean, when creativity. When I was at Scratch, I would always tell everybody. Me and Toast, I used to always talk about this. Like I could tell day one, like first hour of the class, right who's gonna succeed yep. and who's really into this and yep. who's gonna like drop out after oh, like, yeah. a semester or two. You could just tell by who's actually like, who's looking at you. Yep. You're talking that first hour. And I've never been wrong. Ever. Same, dude. Same no. here, bro. And, 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 and here's and this, like, yo, I really want to do this. Like, this is what I want to do with my life. And like, you know, like, and even like you mentioned the digitally taking thing. Like, they'll come in with like weird SoundCloud shit. And, you know, like that's that's our, that's their equivalent of like going to the record store and getting yeah. a rare record. Because, yeah. So, and some of the younger kids still do that. Shit. Yeah. They'll buy CDs. They'll buy records, but. They come in with weird. I mean, you really care about finding something different. That, that, right, that's the whole thing. Is like yeah. I got something that you that's know, me has no right. This is what I what I really like, and whether or not people know about it or not, it's Doesn't not matter. just forced to be forced So there's just a few people out there still like that, but it's it seems like it's more rare these days. But that's what I'm saying. Like I, we can tell from the jump. Yo, dude, and yo, yeah, I, I've I've got, I got that. Me and Toad talk about that shit all the time. He because. I was doing a lot of one-on-one classes for a while. Shout out, like, I don't do the one-on-ones all that much anymore. But, like, that's what it was, man. Like, you could, right away, like, we would sit there and he's like, so, what's it looking like? I'm like, we got one. We got two. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Couple, yeah. <clears throat> and shout out to all the students that, you know, that'll be listening to this, too, that are graduated already at this point. Because mm-hmm. the ones that I've always said, like, like you said, anybody that you just notice, you just know. Yeah. And, like, the, the way they look at it, the class, the questions they ask... The way they treat the shit, it's not just yeah. like, yeah, fuck it, I'm here, I'm gonna be a DJ and like I'm right. gonna kill shit after 202. And it's like, yeah, no, nah, yeah. yeah, no. I mean, it's like you get, you get, what was it, you get out of it when you put into it. Is that what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah. yeah, like the more you effort you put yeah. in, the more you get out. Absolutely, man. Right? Absolutely. That's that's some life shit for y'all. You know what I mean? That's not even that's some DJ shit. Yeah, that's no, just that's some life shit, yo. We 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 old men. We know some shit, man. These beards carry fucking wisdom. You feel me? The, the 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 hair and all, all of that. So, um, yeah, no, I think this was a great first uh, kind of introduction into our lives and what we do and kind of how we think as DJs and as people Absolutely. in general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the I'm, big one thing I want to touch on before you go there. I think a big misconception with a lot of what we do and we've talked about social media with it. And this episode will spring other episodes for sure. We'll be able to talk details about a lot of the topics that we touched on today. Um, but I think the big thing is that there's a perception of us and who we are as sure. people, as DJs. You know, for a long time, like years ago, the perception was DJs are douchebags. So if girls approached yeah. me, it was always like, oh, well, you're just an automatic douchebag. You're here for to pick somebody up and go home with. I'm like, well, no, not really. Yeah. Like, that's not what it is. Now it's you're a jukebox, essentially. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. And, 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 you know, without puns being intended, that's why we're here. Absolutely. So, you know, we are doing this to show you know the individuality that we bring to the table and to represent everybody that does that we know so many people on so many levels that aren't djs that do that whether you're in corporate life you know we got people in the food industry you know shit our our, our other halves like you know our families there you know there's civilian life involved yeah but we there's a level of respect in what they do as well because you can we've talked about you could be a boss and you can respect your employees and their opinion and actually move further with everybody as a group. And that's right. that's the yeah. idea of success through creativity. It's not necessarily one-sided. It's it's a two-way it's street, a two-way street for sure. all the way. So this is to kind of expose the idea that, yo, like, we're fucking human. We get it. We get yeah. that you want to hear what you want to hear. Bodak Yellow's the jam. I'm not trying to argue that shit. Yeah. But at the same time, let me get there. Let me show right. you when to play it. Because I promise when I I promise when I drop it, you're gonna feel it in a way that's gonna be like, ah, fuck. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. It's, a, it's gonna fuck your night up in a, the best way ever. Mm. And that's what we're trying to say. Let us be individuals, and we'll let you be an individual. Sure. As well. yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. Especially in this generation, man. Like the era where I mean, we, we touched on it already. Like 
era of, inst- era of insta- instant gratification. Mm. So yeah. just like having the human element is key, you know, to make it more interesting. <laughs> hey man, that's basically it. I know we got technology, but slow roast works really well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> slow roast that shit, dude. Shout yeah. out to slow roasting. What culture is better experienced than consumed? Ooh, um, shit. Talk that, bro. <laughs> Say it loud for the people in the <laughs> back. <laughs> <channel. laughs> <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> but I, I, honestly, I think everything you guys have been talking about, that's what it really all boils down to. From our, from our experience, from the patrons' experience, from our experience coming up as DJs to how we're DJing now, um, it describes how things have changed uh, with the instant gratification and it's and, and the putting more value into the CD that you bought. Like when you bought the CD and sat with it and listened to it, that was an experience. When you Google your favorite song on YouTube and you hear it and then it's gone, like you you just consumed it. Like what was what, what really remained. Mm. Um, so I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of what I'm getting from you guys right now. Hey, that's um, that's exactly what it is, though, man. Yeah. It's it's an experience versus a consumption, right? Something. Yeah, it's it, it. You you hold more value to the experience. Absolutely. Um, like e- even if you're actually consuming something, if you're experiencing that consumption mm. in, in a certain way, it, it, that meal is going to mean more to you. So, um, you know, I, I guess it that it all boils down to intent. Um, so I think as DJs in our jukeboxes, what what we're doing, what we intend to do, is to to educate. Um, as educators, you know we can de- uh, educate other DJs, um, up and coming DJs, but educating the the patron as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we'll all get there together somehow. Hell yeah! Yeah, I, was gonna say, yeah, I mean I think everything's gonna shift. You know, like DJs' roles, like they always do, is gonna shift, and people's, you know going out and what their intentions are going out that's going to shift it all goes in circles for the most part um or it all not it all goes in circles it all ebbs and flows if you will so it's like yeah for sure everybody's gonna get there together um yeah you know there's a need for substance and there's a want for substance yeah Yeah. and uh, you know like you said man the way the music changes the way the the consumption will change as well Yeah. yeah and as as more people start appreciating that present and that well, experience like the return to vinyl you know like no. the, the, the fact that there are companies still putting out vinyl that haven't in years or only release things on cassette tapes yeah like it's it, you can see it and like when, when I go to record stores you can see it like that people want to be able to feel something again you know like in in the generalist sense of that statement and you know, I think that's that's kind of where the ebb and flow is like I kind of see it happening. The the super, superfluous, superficial nature of what we're in now is people are losing their tolerance for it. I think. Mm, yeah. Yep. Um, and, and want something real again. And you know, maybe it all starts with the way they personally consume music or the way they experience it in the public setting. The way we're trying to you know project it. Um, but you can definitely see that it, it, it's going to come back. Yeah, I agree. Oh yeah. Fingers crossed. And I love the word superfluous. I'm saying, man. <laughs> Nobody's tripping over dictionaries here, man. We know we know the definitions, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, that's, right. I think that's a good way to cap it. Absolutely, yeah. man. So, we, hey, well, much love to anybody that tuned in tonight and or this evening or this morning or whatever time yeah. it is that you're checking it out. Uh, it's recorded, B. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, straight up. We ain't live, bro. We ain't live, man. Uh, but DJs are not jukeboxes. First episode, it's a wrap. We'll be back out here soon. Give it up for everybody that tuned in this evening. We appreciate y'all, man. Remember, substance over illusion and success through creativity. That's what it's all about, y'all. And bar number six. Bar number six. <laughs> bar number six. Woo!